Hello and welcome to Nothing Definitive. My name is Sam, and um, today we're going to be talking about an article called This Subway Creepshot Guy is Your Google Glass Nightmare. This is uh, from a journal entry today, April 18th, 2014. So there was this guy who used his new Google Glass glasses to take voyeuristic photos of women on a subway, among many other photos if you look at his Twitter feed. It wasn't just voyeuristic photos, not that that makes it any better, but just to state that he's not some anon dumping upskirt pics on 4chan. There is probably a distinction there, but the photos are definitely creepy, unwarranted, and inappropriate by modern social standards. The reaction online by people who saw the article was social shaming and perfectly predictable animosity. The tribe, aka society, will always respond this uh, sort of automated way to quell behavior that is considered socially inappropriate. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. But it brings up an interesting dilemma. The problem here is that, despite this guy apologizing and being chastised by society, the future is going to be full of people who don't give a shit about this. In fact, it's probably already full of them, just not to a high enough degree yet. I mean, let's say these social groups who deviate from the social norm is growing because of anonymity and groups that support their behavior, along with a growing population that's increasingly connected to technology. So what if there's even 1% of the population that operates this way? That could be 70 million plus people around the world exploiting technology to pry into our private lives in a variety of different ways. Even if it's less than 1%, it's still probably millions, if not tens of millions of people. Maybe not now, but in a couple decades it might be. And their disinterest and social shaming might do nothing to mitigate this behavior, especially when it's counteracted by forums of people praising it. So then we're left with three potential solutions in my mind. The first is the most common and barbaric way of handling tough problems like this. It's the knee-jerk... Uh, less than 120 IQ method, which is to enact new laws and regulation controlling the internet, which ultimately impacts everyone's freedom because it's impossible to blanket laws properly without affecting good people as well, which would then undoubtedly be followed by a massive drug war-like era of wasted taxpayer money. I mean, don't get me wrong, laws are a somewhat effective way at impacting statistics like this, but it's a big gray area with how far do you go, how much do we sacrifice, etc. There is a trade-off, um, Point, however, a certain level of law that reduces the st statistical amount of this behavior while keeping as much freedom as possible, this is probably the optimal route in a large society. So finding that middle ground is a good idea, but we need to be careful and not hot-headed when we approach this from a legislative point of view. The second solution is to simply start accepting this future. There are going to be these people, and lots of them. Actually, I should probably clarify here that I'm not targeting this specific Twitter user. He might have just made a stupid mistake, but I'm talking more in general now. But the technology is going to be more prolific, and there will be more devices and communities for every type of per perversion possible, and probably some we don't even know of yet. Imagine a world that is full of hackers and CD people constantly invading our privacy, and there's no going back. Once your content is out there, it's out there forever. It's really just a matter of time before a majority percentage of people have questionable content on the internet. It's not going to be about protecting our privacy anymore. It's going to be about embracing transparency. It's going to be hard at first, but eventually everyone will share everything about who they are because they won't really have a choice. In fact, if you somehow manage to remain secretive, there will probably be people out there that know it and are constantly poking holes at your defenses waiting for that one moment you slip up. And then you'll really be a target for social inspection. You'll probably even have news articles written about you. Every embarrassing thing you do online, every porn you've ever looked at, every stupid thing you've said, every weird Google search you've made, it's all going to be out there. But the upside is that there's going to be so much content at some point that everyone will have dirt on everyone. And there will be so much dirt that no one will even care. I actually think that once we reach this stage, things will be a lot better than they are right now because people will be truly open to one another. We'll probably embrace everything because we'll have to. But the getting there is going to be hard and full of touchy subjects and stories of people's lives being ruined, jobs being lost, etc. But it's just part of the journey from my point of view. The last solution, and maybe not even really a solution, but just part of the game, is education. Simply educating yourself, friends and family, and especially children to understand internet 
um, privacy and how to browse and how to think about this stuff is crucial to how we handle it in the future. I think teaching people um, or teaching each other that strict adherence to protecting privacy isn't really that helpful, at least in the long, long term. We need to start considering a future where privacy doesn't really exist. I mean, maybe it will, maybe I'm wrong, but we should at least think about it without having some strong emotional objection to it. And wouldn't a future with total transparency be good in a lot of ways? We look at it as terrible because we all have things to hide, but that's just because we haven't lived through it yet. Consider a child 100 years from now shocked to learn that individual privacy once existed in things they freely expose on a regular basis. And the trade-off for that would be a complete collapse of corruption and clandestine organizations that manip manipulate our world right now. How could they exist if all the moves were on the table and freely visible to all the players? Socially unacceptable behavior would now seem petty and in insignificant compared to what will be exposed in the future. So buckle up, because it's going to be a crazy ride. You might even be one of those pioneering souls to completely divulge themselves online. Hell, I'm already doing it to some degree with this not deaf project. It's just a matter of time before everyone is. Um, so that's what I wanted to share today. Um, I guess that's about it. So thanks for listening as always. Please consider subscribing for future content and to support it. And uh, yeah, see you next time.